A tower clock is a clock which is intended to make the time known publicly either by striking on a bell or bells, showing the time on an external exposed dial, or both. Turret clocks spread throughout churches, monasteries, royal palaces, country house stable blocks, factories, barracks and all places where there was a large number of people working together. In the village, like the town, the church clock regulated the affairs of people meeting together. Turret clocks were set from a sundial, which meant the clocks in towns across the country did not tell the same time due to their different longitudes. Differences across the UK could be up to 30 minutes, but this was quite adequate for local use since no one could travel fast enough to suffer. In the 1830s, when trains started to run across the country, a common railway time was agreed in the 1850s, leading to Greenwich Mean Time being adopted as the national standard in 1880. It wasn't until early in the 20th century that the church clock declined in importance. Thanks to imports of cheap pocket and wristwatches, many people started to use their own timepiece, their greater convenience leading to a decline in the need for public clocks. Parish records show that a church clock existed in 1625. However, by the 1820s the clock needed repair, but the vestry decided not to pay for further repairs. A new clock, which is a clock you see today, was commissioned in 1834 and made in Winterton by clockmaker John Robinson and machine maker Matthew Beacock. It cost £90. Lady Boynton of Winterton Hall gave £50 and the rest was from public subscription. Robinson was a local clockmaker and the forefathers of the Tate family were uh, subsequently clockmakers in Winterton. Um, it's unique and I think uh, that Robinson... Though he was a clockmaker, he wasn't skilled in the heavy work involved, uh, so he co-opted Matthew Beacock to help him with the heavy blacksmithing work, and it's a joint effort. This is confirmed by an inscription on the Panyon Bob. November the 1st, 1834, J. Robinson and M. Beacock, Fessit. We took over from uh, John Ablett, who had done it for nearly 30 years prior to this, and... Uh, uh, the two of us do the job together now, which is far better because it's more flexible. The clock mechanism is located high in the tower, just below the bell chamber. Each week, the Winterton Church clock keepers climb the internal tower ladders to the clock cupboard. They are responsible for the weekly winding and overall clock maintenance. We keep a, a, a regular sort of maintaining of, of lubrication of uh, the friction parts and dusting of other parts, because dust is the real enemy of the clock, uh, as it grinds away between the teeth and, and wears them away. The two weights are 355 kilograms and 152 kilograms. And they each need to be wound up 10.7 meters. The clock train on the hour releases the striking mechanism and the striking wheel has uh, gates in it of different durations to give you your one o'clock, your two o'clock and so on. The diameter of the clock face that you can see on the tower is approximately 1.52 metres, or 5 feet. A new clock face was installed in 1936 and has been repainted during the 2014 restoration. The escapement is uh, quite unique in that it's got uh, roller pallets. It has been said that uh, James Harrison of the famous Harrison clockmakers colluded with John Robinson and Matthew Beacock to design the escapement in this clock before he went on to build Oprah's church a nearby village. We, we, do, we do aim to keep the clock. We try and get it within 10 seconds a week. 